Okay, guys, let's do God's word here. Ready? Everybody with me? For this reason, God gave them up up to dishonorable dishonorable passions for their women, exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. That's right. But not just the women. The men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were eaten up, consumed with passion for one another. Men committing should be embarrassing, shameful shameful acts or shameless acts with men and getting, receiving in themselves the the due, no, think football, penalty penalty for their mistake, errors. That's right. Okay, so so it's, it's both women and men. They're giving up the knowledge of God. They say, we don't want God. They're suppressing the knowledge about God. They exchange the truth about God for a lie. We read that earlier. They, uh, instead of worshiping the creator, they worship what he created. We read that later, earlier. And now he says that men and women are God. And God, by the way, is the one that made us. He said, look, I'm making you. I make you male and female. I make you so that you can get married and have kids. And sex is a beautiful gift. In that context only. And they say, we want to use sex the way we want to use sex. So we don't want you to tell us what to do, God. And so God says, okay, you'll give them up, men and women, to these shameless acts. And they receive in themselves a new penalty for their error. There, there's a penalty for it. There's a punishment. There's a consequence. Disobeying God always comes. And since they did not see fit to recognize Acknowledge. acknowledge very good since they don't see fit to acknowledge God here it is again God gave them up to a but this is maybe a little hard for you I don't know there are two different translations of this they both start with a D and we often speak of a society that's just totally abandoned themselves to sin as one of these kind of societies for example you remember when Israel God told them to come in and take over the promised land where the Canaanites lived the Canaanites were this kind of people they had they were they were slaughtering their children they were they were giving their children into the fire to be burnt to satisfy their pagan gods it was horrific awful sin they were guilty of they were totally this word right here no it, it sounds close to that though it starts with the dep what no right there. uh you may not you may not be familiar with the word i won't tell you how to time uh DEP, but it means it means they're utterly sinful. They're just they're just totally. It sounds really close. Depend. That, that's not a word, but uh, defend is a word. Her word's not a word, but no. D, it starts with DEP. How many letters? Eight. Eight. I think. Eight. No, no, it's not that long. Okay. Uh, D E P R. What? Depraved. That's it. Depraved. Depraved is the word. Have you heard that word before? Depraved. You've heard the word before. Depraved. Depraved. Now, guys, that's the word some translations have, and that's what it means. But this particular translation uses another word that starts with a D E B. It starts with B. No, you don't have to guess. I'm just going to give you a chance to if you want to. It starts with a D-E-B, and it means pushed down, gone down several notches. It's not effective. It's not good. It's, it's, it's embarrassingly, shamefully, it's, it's, but it's put down. It's, the, their brain can't think well. D-E-B, you may not, you may not be familiar with this word. It's D-E-B-A. <laughs> D-E-B-A what? D E B A and not many more letters. You mean how many letters? Uh, D E B A S debased. debased. It's good. It's good, Trey. It's good, Trey. To a debased or depraved mind. Oh, I gave you that. You didn't guess that one, did you? Mind. Okay. God gave them up to a debased or depraved mind. To do what 
this is a, something to be done. This is a strong, this is a negative word. No. Three letters. No. Not. To do what something not to be done. What's that word? No, to do what something not, it means shouldn't. What? Just, why would they just? To do what, it means to do what shouldn't be done. They shouldn't be doing these things. So what's the word here? Ought not. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So, so once again, God's reminding us these people don't want him in their lives. They don't acknowledge God. So once again, God reminds us he gave them up to this debased mind, to a depraved, debased mind. It can't think straight. It's, it's messed up. It's confused because it won't let God in to do what ought not to be done. They start doing sin and calling it okay, and it leads to really bad outcomes and bad consequences. It shouldn't be done. But they're doing it anyway because they don't see fit to acknowledge God. All right. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, and since they did not see fit, since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, to acknowledge God, God gave them up. God gave them up. God gave them up. To a debased mind. To a debased mind. To a debased mind. To a debased mind. God gave them up to a debased mind. This is a little confusing right here. To do what ought not to be done. 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 They did not see to acknowledge God. Very good. That's very good. God gave them up to a, de to a what? Debased mind. Remember the rest of it? To do. To be should not be sure. To do what ought not to be done. Very good. Good, Madison. All right. Good job, guys. All right. Anything you want to mention or say before I lead us in prayer? Anything at all? Let me, let me, uh, I'll, I'll lead us in prayer and I'll say that. Father, thank you so much for these kids. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the getting us through this quarter and this first semester of the year. Lord, thank you that we're approaching Christmas and this time of the year, Lord, is a, is a fun time for us. We thank you for the opportunity to celebrate the birth of Jesus. We pray we'll celebrate his birth well, the incarnation, God becoming man, that we'll celebrate that well and worship you well in our churches and our families. Pray that we will be a blessing to our families during this break. Lord, help us not to be cranky and irritable and difficult. Uh, help us to be uh, sweet and and help us to forgive others quickly if they get a little cranky. Help us to be gracious and kind. Help us to be Christ-like. And uh, Lord, help us just to enjoy you, to realize that you're with us and you're blessing us. And you're giving us many, many uh, pleasant times with family and others, friends. So thank you for this time. I pray you give the kids a good break and a safe break. Keep them safe, help them to make good decisions and uh, come back safely in January. And help us to get started really strongly and well in January and to do better uh, in terms of study habits and discipline habits, in terms of getting things done and learning these things well. So please help them to take this seriously. Thank you again for your word. Thank you for reminding us in your word that there are people who do not see fit to acknowledge you. Lord, they don't want to talk to you like we are right now. They don't want to think about you. They don't want to look to you in your direction. They don't want to hear you. They want to decide for themselves what's right and what's wrong, and they mess up every time. They have a debased mind, a depraved mind. So, Lord, thank you for telling us this, reminding us of this truth, and they wind up doing what ought not to be done and paying a hard, heavy, bad consequence, having a bad outcome. So, Lord, we pray for mercy. We pray that many of them would wake up before it's too late, that they would turn to you in repentance and faith and accept you and your truth and your word. And Lord, we pray you turn our nation around. We pray for spiritual awakening. We pray you raise up godly men and women to speak clearly your truth to people. Help us in our little corner of the world to speak truth, to stand firm in your word and in your truth and not be ashamed of it. Anyway, Lord, use us today and, uh, and uh, help us to be a blessing to you today and uh, help us to remember you're not going to leave us any, any, any time ever. So thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank um, isn't that amazing? Yes. yes, it's that way, and life is that way. When you're looking forward to things, it seems like it takes so long. When you're looking back at things, you think, wow, <laughs> how did that happen so fast? Yeah, It gets worse and worse as you get older and older. That's one of the reasons why, you know, the Bible talks a lot about soon. You know, Jesus said, I'm coming soon. We said, well, wait a minute. It's been 2,000 years. That's not soon. 
when we get there, we'll look back and say, wow, that was fast. From the position perspective of eternity, it'll seem fast, I promise. Okay, now, let me say, let me say something else here before I, uh, I'll uh, turn that off. But, um, did y'all get the text I sent? Did your parents get it? Did you know? I sent one yesterday, I, or sometime, sometimes, about this test, this last test. Are y'all paying attention? Listen to it carefully. Most of the grades, there were some exceptions, but most of the grades were low on this last test. And I thought, surely, I hope, several of you will want to retake that test. And I thought, if I give that, put on that on the second quarter, you don't have time. You know, there's, there's just, there's not time to do everything else you got to do and retake that test. So I decided to give you a little breathing room and roll it over to the third quarter. So that test and the assignments, since assignments and tests, I see them together. I'm just rolling all that over the third quarter. You'll see your grade on CC grade, but it'll say third quarter. It won't be counted in this, in this quarter. It'll be counting next quarter. So if you made a low grade, you've got plenty of time to take a deep breath and retake it. It's just up to you to retake it. I'm not going to force you to. I'll also have some more handouts after the break because I figure you might have lost your handouts. I'll make some more handouts. So if you need to study and retake it, you can. Now, am I making sense? Yeah. So like Simon's 31, 32, 33, 34, and 35 that went with the seventh test uh, will all count on the third quarter. But I'm not going to reteach it all third quarter. We don't have time for that. I'm, I'm starting something new today. But you can, re, you, know, you can come to me for help, and I'll be glad to help you go over the study guide or whatever. You know, you make, make sure you're ready for the test. And you don't have to take it immediately when you get back. You've got some breathing room there. You just take it when you get ready. But you got to get ready, and we keep moving. You know how that works. So, okay. Now, uh, I will show you if you want to see your grade. And some people don't want to see their grade because they don't like other kids saying, "What'd you make? What'd you make? What'd you make?" And I understand that. I might be that way myself. But if you really want to see your grade, I will show you what you made on this test. It'll be right above my thumb or my finger. Uh, Zayden, do you want to see what you made? I'm just going down the row. Okay, you saw it? Okay. Uh, Camelia, you want to see what you made? Okay. Uh, Thomas, I told you what you made, didn't I? You made, you did good. You made the highest grade of any, any of my classes. Yeah. yeah, he made the highest grade of anybody in either class. Uh, Kamara, you want to see what you did? Oh, you're taking that. Okay. Uh, Madison, you want to see what you made? That's okay. That's, that's not bad. That's a good grade. Uh, Amy? Like one of the no, I'm not going to say that. That's not. No. Uh, Sawyer, you want to see yours? No. Sophia's not here. Trey, do you want to see yours? Okay. All right. Any questions about what I just said? Everybody clear on that? Very good. Okay. So. Let's see. Four? Well, hmm. yeah. must have closed that accidentally. Let's see. All right. Uh, how many of you have seen that word ratio before? You've seen it before? Yeah, ratios really are easy. Ratios are just fractions. Sometimes you'll see them written like this. Sometimes you'll see them written like that, but you read it the same way. Three to four, three to four. 
But usually we write it like this because we know how to work with those things. They're fractions. And they work just like fractions. I mean, there's nothing different from a regular fraction. They say here it could be written as a decimal, but you know that means 75 to 100. That's 75% or 75 hundredths. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is sometimes when they give you ratios, you have to think about the total that they may not give you. Like in this case, they say uh, the boy-girl ratio was three to four. By the way, are you listening? It has to be in the order that they give it to you. Boy to girl, three to four. This is boys, this is girls. It has to stay in the same order. If it said girl to boy, it'd be four to three. You see the difference? Now, what if they said, uh, what's the ratio of the boys to the students? Well, how many students are there in this group? Seven. Yeah, if there's three boys and four girls, there's seven. <laughs> seven total. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? <laughs> okay. It's pretty close. That's pretty impressive. Um, all right. My ACT, the boys are outnumbered. I only have one boy in there, and I got about eight girls, I guess, or something like that. Eight or nine girls. ACT. No, Thomas and I. No, not the minimum. No. Yeah, yeah, that's a different class. Anyway, if I said, what's the ratio of the boys to total, it would be three to seven. You understand that? And you have to, and sometimes you have to calculate that. Sometimes they'll give you the, calc the total and you'll have to figure out how many girls or boys there are. I'll see, show you some examples like that. So, it's what? Poe? Oh. No, it's uh, Dylan. I think Cole may have had ACT last year. I'm not sure. He may not have. Um, so here's an example. 28 children. There are 12 boys. What's the boy-girl ratio? They don't tell you how many girls there are. 28 12. Yeah. Yeah. So the girls would be 28 minus 12, which is 16, right? Yeah. So what? Thank you. It's 12. It looks like 72. 12 to 16, 12. which you could say, which you could reduce to three fourths. And then they ask it the other way around, girl, boy. So there, there are 16 girls, so it's 16 to 12 boys. So you got to pay attention to the order. Boys to girls, 12 to 16. Girls to boys, 16 to 12. Or 16 twelves. Okay? Those are ratios. Okay. And they didn't tell you the girls. You had to subtract to find it. 28 children, 12 boys. All right. The team won four-sevenths of his games and lost the rest. So if it won four-sevenths, how many did it lose? If it won four-sevenths, how many did it lose? Three-sevenths, right? Three out of seven. What's the win-loss ratio? So, yes, it is. It's four wins for every three losses. Three sevens were lost. Four sevens were won. So, for every four games won, three games were lost. So, it's four to three. We'll, we'll have a, it'll be a little bit more stuff. It'll be ratios with more stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Good. All right. Look at this one. Probability. How many of you are familiar with the word probability? You seen that word before? Probability. Okay. You need to memorize this. By the way, you know, I know ACT is a long way for you guys, but this kind of stuff is on the ACT, so you might as well learn it now. Probability. You can think of it as the number of ways you can get what you want versus the total possible outcomes. Did you hear me? The number of ways you can versus the total possible. If you toss a coin, what's the probability of getting a heads? Yeah, one out of two. There are two possible outcomes, right? It's either heads or tails. One of them is heads, so there's one out of two. If you roll a die, you know, like a six-sided die, and, you, and what's the probability of getting a five? One out of six. There's one five on that thing. You know what a die? You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Everybody know? Like a little cube, and you got a one and a two and a three, and yeah, you know, the probability the probability of rolling a a six is one out of six. Probably rolling any of the numbers. A four is one out of six. Five is one out of six. There's one of each each one. One way to get it, six possible outcomes. If I said, here's a spinner. Mm 
You hate them? What's the probability of spinning a four? How many? How many different? Seven. How many? Count the number of places. Two out of eight. Yeah, there are eight. There are eight places there. Yeah, there eight places. Put the seventh is the highest number, but it was two out of eight. There are two fours up there. It's two out of eight, which is one fourth, right? You see it. See, sorry. What's the probability of spinning a five? Uh, one eight. One out of eight. Everybody see it? What's the probability of spinning a noun? Zero. You know what that means when you get a probability of zero? It can't happen. Yes, it can't happen. You can't spin a nine. There's not on there. It's impossible. Yeah, you could, but then you can no nine. What's the probability of spinning a number less than nine? All of them, which is eight out of eight, which is of course one, right? When the probability is one, what does that mean? There's nothing. It's always one. I can't miss. Yeah, you're going to get it. You're going to get it every time. You're going to get something less than nine. There's no way to not get it. Okay? Everybody clear on that? See what I'm doing? Probability, number of ways you can over the total possible outcomes. Number of ways you can over the total possible outcomes. Um, Hi. We'll do some stuff with pie in here. Some pie squared for circles. Did we get to eat actually? What? That's where my mind goes to, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I should have thought more quickly and said home ex, shouldn't I? <laughs> but anyway. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It was this thing, and I said, "Who learned this? Like ever? What is this?" I don't remember. And the teacher, and she said, "Don't worry about that. That's like eleventh grade." I'm like, "Why?" Wonder why they put it on a test? Yeah. You don't remember what it was? Like, I remember it was like the area and I didn't. I was something. Sorry. Perimeter. Perimeter. When we were in area and perimeter, it was like right. Before and literally, we had to learn it in five minutes yeah. before our um, test, test, test ready test. They were like, okay, so you guys don't know area and perimeter. They were just, no, we're just going to teach you real quick. So okay. you're not going to miss it. Okay, here we go. All right, let's look at a little more probability here. This time, we're talking about a bag of marbles. You got a bag that has four red marbles and five green marbles. What's the probability of drawing a red? Four out of Nine. See, so nine all together. You got nine all together. So it's four out of nine. You got to think about the whole thing. Well, you can't over the whole thing. Probably getting a green is five out of nine. And the probability of drawing a blue is zero because none of them are blue. Does that make sense, everybody? You gotta, don't forget that you got to think about the whole thing, the total number of possibilities. We already said that zero means it can't happen. One means it has to happen. Half means it's half likely. In a pond with 240 little fish and 90 big fish, what was the ratio of big fish to little fish? Big to little. 90 to 240. 90 to 240. Don't get them backwards now. And 240 little, 90 big, but they ask big first, you see. So, yeah, you got to get them in the right order. 14 of the 30 children at the party were girls. What was the boy-girl ratio? How many boys were there? Doesn't say. Doesn't say. So how many were there? Yeah, 30 minus 30 were uh, 14 were girls. So 30 minus 14 would be 16. 16 and the boy girl ratio means boys are first, 16 to 14. Yeah. yeah. The team won three eighths of its games and lost the rest. How many did it lose? Eight. Five eighths. You got to add up to eight here. Three and five add up to eight. Five eighths lost. What was the team's win loss ratio? Win loss. Yeah, that's right. Three to five. They contain red marbles and blue marbles. The ratio of red marbles and blue marbles was five to three. What's the fraction of the marbles were blue? What fraction of the marbles were blue? What fraction of the marbles were blue? Red to blue, five to three. Three eighths. Very good. Yeah. When it says the marbles, it's talking about all of them. 
So there are five red for every three blue. That means for every eight marbles, three of them are blue. So it's three A's. Probably a rolling number less than four with one toss of a dot cube. Probably rolling less than four. You roll a dot cube. You know, they're talking about a die. Less than four. How many? Very good. There's six total sides, and three of them are. That's right. Half. Half. That's very good. One out of one out of two. Very good. Very good. Very good. All right. Spinner. What's the probability of the spinner stopping on a three? One out of four. Everybody see it? One out of four. Probability of stopping on a five? Zero. What's the probability of a spinner stopping on a number less than six? Yeah, four out of four, which is one. This is a little tricky. Uh, and one half and two fourths. What you have to do with something like this is kind of pretend it's four fourths. So you got two A's up here. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, that's a little tricky. So the probability of stopping on an A is two out of four or a half. And the probability of stopping on a B is one out of four. You know, once you get it separated like that, it's pretty clear. But at first, it can be confusing because you have to separate that A into two parts. All right. You did a good job. Very, very good. We are the brain table. All right. Um, now I want to talk about area of triangles. Um, so now here's the here's the formula. And you need to memorize this right now. I should have asked if you already know it. That's an area, one half the base times the height. Here's the base. Half. Here's the height. It's always perpendicular to the base. But you take half of either one of them and then multiply. All right, let me show let's look, let's look at some more. Here's the base. Here's the height. Here's the base. Here's the height. If, it's, if the height's not perpendicular like it is with these, you have to draw a perpendicular from the base up to the height, to the vertex. And that's the height, not one of these sides. It's this distance right there. It's a dotted line because it's not part of the triangle, but it's the height. Got it? Got it. Okay. We'll do some. Yeah, and we're not going to worry about the trapezoids right now. We'll just do triangles. You can think of a trapezoid as two triangles. That's what you can think of. Okay, we'll talk about that later. Uh, notice that sometimes. There's not a line that goes straight up from this, this base to this. So you extend the base with a dotted line. This is not part of the base now. The base is still this, okay? But this height is, is out here because it has to be perpendicular to what the base would be if you drew it out perpendicular, right, right angle here. But it's a dotted line to show that's not really the base. The base is over here. But the height's outside the triangle. Sometimes that's the case. There's another one over there. See how that works? Yeah. Yes. Yes, I'll, and I'll, I will let you go. I would like to remind everybody, it's good for you to try to use the bathroom before you come to class so you don't have to go during class. But what you can do is just wherever the vertex is, wherever the top of it is, drop a perpendicular line straight down. And if it's outside the triangle, that's fine. Just extend the base. It's still the height. This one's inside. That one's outside. doesn't matter. It just has to be a perpendicular. You know what that means. Right angle, straight up and down. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay, so um, so let's do a few of these. What's the formula? Base yeah, half the base times height. Now watch me, guys. You got three things to multiply: half times twelve times five. If it were me, do you think I would multiply a half times five first or a half times 12 first? I would multiply a half times 12 first. That's easy because that's an even number. A half of 12 is six and six times five is 30. It doesn't matter if you want to do it the other way. What's a half of five, you know? Two and a half, two, four, five. If you multiply 12 by two, four, five, you know what you get? 30. But it's easier this way. You know, it's easier to get rid of the fractions and decimals. It's yeah, you, you multiply half times either one of these and then multiply the other one. 
So I would multiply a half times 12 instead of a half times 5 because 12 is even and it's easy. A half of 12 is 6. You could multiply 5 times 12 and get 60. And a half of 60 is 32. It doesn't matter which order. I'm just trying to make it as easy as I can. Okay? So this one, a half, what's the base? What's the base? 12. What's the height? 8. What are you going to multiply first? Me too. A 6. 6 times 8 is 48. Does everybody see it? This is 6. Half of 12 is 6. 6 times 8 is 48. Over here, area equals a half. Base times height. This time the base is 6. The height is 6. Half of 6 is 3. 3 times 6 is 18. Yep. So just look for the easy way out. Let me let me give you another example. Suppose I said, suppose I said, here's a triangle. Um, and this base is 11 and the height is 8. The formula is a half times a base times a height, which is a half times 11 times 8. Are you with me still? Everybody with me? What do you think I'm going to multiply first here? The 8 and the half. I would. Because yeah. a half of 8 is 4, right? This is 4 times 11, which is 44. Everybody clear on that now? you got three things to multiply. Don't leave out that half. All right, there's one more thing I want us to see. Sometimes, do you remember how to find the area of a rectangle? Rectangle. Remember the rectangle? What's the area of a rectangle? Remember? Rectangle. Length yes, yeah, length times width. Length, length times width. Yeah, that's a rectangle. Sometimes they will give you, and they will in this lesson, some weird looking figures. And they say, Yes. Oh, yeah. And she's like, What are you doing? So she asks her. Uh, and her husband's like super math. Mm -hmm. So she asked him, and he filled it, and he didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I know this is right. Mm -hmm. But the, I feel like the easier way to do it, since you'll mm -hmm. be able to get it to where you already have, mm -hmm. multiply really, I think you, like, what I would do, is I would have to do those two right there. Right here? Yes. Yeah, that's fine. You can do it that way. Uh, now, let's let's... Let's do it this way this this time since I already drew that. Now now think about it. You got two of them, right? Yeah. Big one and a little one. The area of both of them is going to be length times width. This is how how wide? Ten and how long? Fourteen. So that's real clear. So it's 140, right? But but wait a minute. That we know that's five. What's this? Six. Yeah, you, how did you know it was six? Okay, this is 20 down here, right? And that's 14 up here. So if this is 14, I've got to add something to 14 to get 20, which is 6. Everybody see it? You subtract 20 minus 14 to get 6. These two things have to add up to this. Now, the area is the same formula, length times width, which is 5 times 6, which is 30, right? Yeah, so the total means, total area of the whole thing is 140 plus 30, which is 170. Do I see? See? All right, so it doesn't matter. In fact, let's just do the same problem. I think we've got time. Um, and, and we'll do it. We'll, we'll do it. Was it Amy that said she'd do it this way? Is, is, that, is that what you said? Yeah. All right, it's the same kind of problem, but up here you got to figure out what this width is now. Okay, now how did you know it's five? Because that one's five, and this is ten over here, and these two have to add up to ten since that's five. This has got to be five. See, it's got to be ten on both sides. So this area is five, five times fourteen, not a half, because we're not doing triangles. This is rectangles. You know what five times forty? Five times fourteen is. 70 in it. Yeah, 70. Down here, it's what? Pretty easy. What is it? Yes, yeah, 5 times 20. 
it, we got it's given to me. It's five there and it's 20 here. So five times 20 is 100. And the total is 170, which is what we got a while ago. Add those two together. Get 170. We can do it either way. It doesn't really matter much. Just separate it into two rectangles every time. One more. By the way, and I'll, I'll, I'll just talk about it on this one. Uh, you want to separate it this way this time? All right. What's this distance right here? Okay. Yeah, this is 12. There's seven right there. So this must be five. Everybody see it? You understand why that's five? Because this plus this has to add up to 12. And this is seven. Seven and five is 12. So the area is five times 10, which is 50. Right down here, it's a little bit harder, isn't it? The area is length times width, which is 23 times 7. You know what that is? Uh, and... Yeah, 161, is that right? Yeah. yeah. 61. Yeah. If you don't know how to, if you can't do that in your head, that's all right. Just go over to the side and multiply. 7 times 3 is 21. 14. 20 was 140. Mm -hmm. That's a good way. It's a good way to do it. The total two hundred and so the total is one sixty one. Oops, plus fifty. Yes, two hundred eleven. Right. Now, did we need this length right here? No. No. If I had drawn it down this way, I would have needed that one, but I wouldn't have needed this one. If they ask for perimeter, I'd have to have them all. Okay. So if they ask for perimeter, I'd say, well, this has to be 23 minus 10. That's 13, right? 10, 13, 23. And this, we already figured out, has to be 5. And the perimeter, just add up. Don't add this 5 twice. This 12, this 10, that 5, that 13, that 7, and that 23. Add them all up. Perimeter is just distance all the way around. Got it? Okay, but we're doing area mainly this time. You need to be able to do both. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's separate it like this. So what's this distance right here? Um. Yeah, 24 minus 8, there's 8 here, so it'd be 16, right? 8 and 16 added to 24. This is, so this area right here is uh, 6 times 16. And again, if you need to, go to the side. 6 times 6 is 36, 96, right? This one down here, easier. 8 times 20, 160, is that right? And you got 160 plus 96. 96 is 15, 256. There you go. Yep. Just separate them into two. Work each one separately and add them up. That's all there is to it. All right. Now, you want to start there next time after the break. Okay. Let me say one more thing to you before I pray. Uh, some people have been asking me, do I have to come Thursday? Let me explain what's happening Thursday. Thursday is a half day. You'll only be here half a day. You'll have to leave at half day before lunch. Um, if you've completed everything, you don't have anything else to do. You're not going to take any retakes or any makeup test. You don't have any assignments to turn in. As far as I'm concerned, you don't have to be here on Thursday unless you want to. It's a fun day, though. They're going to be doing a lot of fun stuff. So most of you would probably want to come just to have some fun. Okay, and some of you can't be here. But, but yeah, but now if you have to make up a test or retake a test or turn in some assignments, you have to be here and get that done if, you, if you've got some stuff still hanging over you. But otherwise, if, you, if, you, if, you don't, if you've got something your family needs to do, you're not going to be penalized for that. You know, if you can't be here, it's, it's, you're fine. You don't have to come. But some of you need to make up a test. I'll be in here to give makeups and retakes and that kind of stuff. Okay. And to take assignments. Any questions about that? Understand what's happening? There's a rumor going around that if you didn't come, you'd have to write a five-page essay. I, 
I, I don't think there's any truth to that. I think it's, yeah. <laughs> I, I think, I don't think there's any truth. I asked a couple of other teachers, I said, that's not true, is it? And they both said, no, I don't think so. So, you know, I don't know where that, I don't know how they got started. So, you know, you know, you know. I can I can tell you I will not let you have to write a five page essay. How's that? If you decide not to pray. Okay. All right. Anything else? Okay. Ready to pray? All right. Lord, thank you for these kids. Thank you for all your blessings. I thank you for this time we have together. Thank you for Christmas again. We pray you'd help us during the break to make make good decisions and be a blessing to you and others, and bring us back safely in January. Uh, we just want to be good followers of Jesus and represent you well. So please help us do that. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys.